another two lander. Uh, we'll keep it. M main reason why I'm fine with keeping this is because we do end up with these Arab Enlightenments a lot in our opening hand. Um, which does allow us to dig to get those lands. Oh look, Ganjo showed up and it wasn't, uh, in our opener that time. Um... I think we'll still play Ganjo maybe for the land. And then just go for the Enlightenment. Set up the next couple draws. Enlightenment for our opponent as well. Let's uh, take a look first. Repel the file. Against their colors, we want Repel the file, so we'll leave that on top. Such an enlightened era here. <laughs> we'll bring out the uh, katana and we'll attack in. Sadly, we don't get the um, one mana equip option with that because we attack the pilot, not a warrior or a samurai. What are you doing to my katana? I don't appreciate you looking at it like that. Oh, a Tushi. Alright. Well. I'll just go ahead and touch a Tushi. And we're going to see no attacks. The reason why I'm saying no attacks is I don't want to just trade off my Hand of Enlightenment. Um, and Hotshot Mechanic would just die it wouldn't, because of the first strike. One of the things that we can do is we can now use the Katana, uh, equip it, attack, and we'll be able to uh, kill the, uh, the hands in a double block. Now granted, the opponent could have their own combat tricks. Like Hot Spring, for example. Um, I'm going to have to get rid of that Hot Spring. If they attack with that, we go for the double, I think. Oh. Now, see, I would have been punched if the opponent had gone for the attack first. Let's... Repel this enchantment. We no attack. Tracking Kami Reborn, I'm not too afraid of. Because that's only a death trigger, and we can always just use touch on it after they finish exiling cards from their deck. really likes their uh, Air of Enlightenment. No blocks. Shall we befriend some moths? I think we shall befriend some moths. Uh, we'll send the Hotshot Mechanic in the air. that they befriended. Okay. No blocks. See, 
see, let's go ahead and Vanishing Slash the Moss. Put it there with their wall of first strike. Right, I'm going to block here and I'm going to attempt to iron hook this. When it has a combat trick, I kind of want to get it out of their hand right now. seem to have a combat trick because of the pause that they have going on, but I don't know what trick it is. What's the opponent got there? Oh, season of renewal. Okay. Bring up Seven Tailed Mentor and we'll put a plus one plus one counter on the Maw. We'll pass turn. This will actually make it so that the opponent can't attack in with the Handed Enlightened and actually get any damage through in the air. But they definitely have a ground force that we don't want to attack into. Because all the first strike in, we don't want to kill the Kami's A. Alright. Opponent gets the Historian's Wisdom. So we're going to actually touch the Spirit Realm, get rid of this Hand of the Enlightened. Because it's just, it's too powerful. Um, if a champ permanent is a creature, draw a card, plus two, plus one. Can we risk going down to three? It's a, it's a big risk. I'm going to say no blocks. We're going to risk it. Touch the Spirit Realm, get rid of this Hand of the Enlightenment. Um, we no attack here, because I don't know what they've exiled with the Dragon Kami's egg. And they exiled big cards, um, because when this dies, they get all the, they may cast a creature from among the cards they own in exile. Alright, we get a life point here. Pony can't block this turn, so we will get the hit in. And the kid's attack is in the air, unless they find a way to get this haste. Alright, but it's communing with the spirits, so they find the bearer of memory. Alright, unfortunately that will slowly tick up the Imperial Moth here, to be able to be able to get through. Ooh. Touch the Spirit Realm. Alright, well, let's see. I think we go for the Maw. This allows us to attack in. And we unequip to the Hand of the Enlightened. That can trade against us, but it's not going to get through. Right, we will go for the Scry 2 here. Sorry, Commander. Let's see, new battlefield. The opponent's going to be at 7. We attack in, they go down to 4. They have 3 blockers. So one, two, let's see, one, two, three, and that means we still get four through. So it's not a bad card. Uh, I'm gonna still leave Roadside Reliquary on top. Because we can play the Reliquary, sacrifice it, draw, and still have the um, 
option to make those uh, attackers. Uh, I mean, make that an attacker. Because the amount of mana we have. So I think we actually managed to close up the game here. Sacrifice the draw. Bring up Commander. The full attack. And yeah, we get there. So I'm gonna see what's uh, exiled with the uh, the one card though. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there we go. We managed to, to get there. This is a bit of a risky keep, but if we can actually get to this red mana, it's a strong hand. We're starting with the air of enlightenment again, so I'm gonna take the risk. I know we are down to only one more, uh, like our last loss here, but I think this is a worthwhile risk. We find the Banishing Slash, which is a great removal. We just gotta find the red sources. There's a red source. With this red source, we can play Kumano. That was the idea. But I think we're gonna... Oh. No, I'm gonna hold on to the Sniper. I think it's like, we could just snipe that out of the air, prevent them from doing something, but... We can actually play Sniper next turn if we can hit a land off the top. Okay, what's this do again? They chose the color red, so it only taps for mana that's the chosen color. Alright, Synth Speed, not too worried about. Unfortunately, we don't have a creature to play this turn. We will go ahead and use the Explosive Entry, though. Gets rid of the the card grows our hand. So that gets it out of the range of the minus two, minus two spell, unless they suddenly modify the creature. I really wanted to draw that land to be able to cast this, because then Kumana would have put a plus one plus one counter on it. So that's a bit of a shame that we couldn't get that. Alright. So, Infiltrator for our opponent. We're, we're going to try to dig for a land. Come on, land. No! Why did it have to be that one? Alright, we're going to Banishing Slash that. That was a big loss. I mean, I guess it's not that big of a loss, but that's still... That... That sucks to lose. Alright, well, let's attack in. See what the opponent does. I'm trying to bait the opponent into blocking. If they do, we have Twin Shot that we can play in main phase 2 to finish off Kadetsu. The only problem is because Kumano is off the board now, this won't be a uh, exile. Yes, and then, by the way, the opponent funny I knew could sacrifice this in response to the two damage to get the scry to, but I did still think that was worthwhile. But just a reminder, this is on red, so we know the opponent is black, red, white. It might be a splash of red just for Hidetsu's ability. But, who knows, there might be some other red cards lurking in their deck. Opponent has some kind of in it speed interaction here, maybe. If that's the case, I don't want to play Lizard Blades. Okay, so they bring up Papercraft. Going Lizard Blade. I'm going to attach it here. And we'll just go in with both. 
I'm fine with trading against the Blade Buster there, because this is a double striking um, a Vigilant creature. It'd be great if we can get another red source for the Raiju. If they do kill this 2 2, we still have Lizard Blades unattaching from it. So they have to have two removal spells, or just a, something that can deal with artifacts. If we can. If we don't draw a land, we can try to spin the um, synthesizer here to try to get ourselves another land. Because if we have to spin for another land and we do hit it, we can always just play the exemplar and that boosts this attack anyways. Alright, gotta spin for that land. Come on, deck. Gotta be freaking kidding me on this. Alright. We, we are at a 50% draw rate for a land, so... Alright. The opponent did have the removal spell that I was thinking that they might have. But we're just not drawing our lands. We just need one red source, and the Stunning Raiju would actually be really amazing. Um, But now it's so late that it's not going to be that amazing? Alright, we'll attempt to block here. We're fine with that trade. We attach this. The opponent's going to get a draw when they block with this decoy, but... It's... Our best play option we have here. Opponent, though, is in top deck mode. Alright, there's an Imperial Oath for the opponent. This actually now attacking and actually does let us kill all of the, uh, the tokens. <laughs> But we can use the Ogre to prevent them from blocking with at least one this turn. But this is actually a better play. So we attack in. Both of these trigger. We auto pay. And now this is a 10 damage strike. Yeah, they can jump block it. But they can't, like, gang up and destroy it anymore. This is a problem. It's going to keep perpetually generating chump blockers for the opponent. I'm going to hold this. Let's first attack it. I kind of want to hold this in case the puck does try to make an attack of some type. But I don't think they are going to. Oh, uh, here we go. Befriend them off. We'll go flying. That's going to deal 12 points of damage. So opponent has to find a removal spell for this creature. If not, we will win the game. I mean, I guess they could find a removal for the Goshinta. I mean, not the Goshinta, but like running the boss here. We attack. Decline. Good game. And we get there. Whew. That, that was... I was worried we would get stuck behind this wall of tokens and not be able to end that. But thankfully, we managed to, to get there. So, ah, this is a key. Yeah. This one's definitely a key. The only drawback to Kumano here is we're going to play Enlighten. And we're... Well, actually, no. We could play Lizard Blade. And just get a 2 2 double striking wizard one. Is it greedy? Yes. But the opponent doesn't have an answer. This will run away with the game. Especially considering we can touch the spirit realm and get rid of the blocker. Alright, modern age for our opponent. Gonna come in for six damage here. We'll play it in light and error to scry two. Try to find another land. Alright, we only need one more. The reason why I wanted that one more land is that we can 
have the mana for the twin shot sniper to actually be casted. No! Wait, I can still use the equipment, right? No, I can't use any of its abilities. Unless they're mana abilities. No! Ah, sigh. Alright. Well, in that case, we'll play Twin Shot. We will send the damage to the face. And keep up the aggression. Next turn, we can use the Ogre to say something can't block. Actually, better yet, let's just simply touch the Spirit Realm. Because we can't attack in without losing something to the Vector Glider. And I'd rather get rid of the Light Linger. Alright, Spirit Companion, not worried about. If you get another land off the top, we could play Ogre, say we can't block with something. And have four. Alright, Ogre. Um, no blocking with Vector Glider. Uh, Iron Hoof, Trample. They're down to two. Can they come back? Uh, Imperial Oath, dang it. Might have been a good idea to have kept the four then, because we could have just gone to Trample on the Ogre. And maybe if gotten a surprise win there. Well, let's sacrifice the Reliquary, get ourselves two card draws. Alright, so they have to double block to kill this. So, but they have to block everything. They only have one, two, three, four, five. They have five cards. We attack. I, th I figured they would use the Vector Glider there, but... This allows us to get rid of Vector Glider, keep our card there. This arrest is so sad to me for the Lizard Blades there. If we, if we actually top deck Raiju and be, get, be able to get the attack trigger, we'll win. Because we have two creatures that are modified, and that'll just do two damage to the face, so Raiju would be our best draw. Land. Um, let's first attack, see what the opponent does. Just a chunk block. Bring out the hot shot. I'm a little worried, since the opponent is in white-blue, that they could, um, hit us with a farewell. But the opponent does actually discard the Sunblade Samurai instead of trying to play it. So that way they can get to two life. To taxes. Does this counter creature spells? No, artifact, instant, or sorcery. Artifact, instant, sorcery. Okay, that's game then, because it doesn't affect enchantments. We get there! That is seven. Alrighty. All right, so yeah, there we go. Manage actually makes seven wins with this. This is awesome. Um, I'm always excited whenever we can get to the the full, full run. But yeah, so as you can see, we managed to make seven wins with the deck. So we'll get to our 2,200 uh, gems, as well as the six packs. But just a, a quick show for anyone who was late to the uh, thing here. We managed to actually pull ourselves off our first pack, a Thundering Raiju. Second pack, we managed to get a Lizard Blade. It was amazing. But not only that, somebody actually passed us a Risona on um, the uh, second pack. So we went Thundering Raiju, we picked up the Risona, and we were like, okay, we can probably make something work out of this. Now, Rizona here, unfortunately, really didn't put in a whole lot of work overall in the games. But it's still not a bad card, because it is a 3-minute 3-3 um, haste creature. The 
an indestructibility, you never really see it come to play. Oop, did not mean to click that out. Resona, get back in there. But the cards that we had, we had the Iron Hook Boar, we had Befriending the Moss, Repel the Vile, Seven Tail Mentor, Twin Shot Sniper, Thundering Raiju, Resona, Unstoppable Ogre. We got three Touch the Spirit Realms. Now, granted, this isn't uncommon, so yeah, you can see it go around. But normally, you don't get this many of the card. In fact, I actually ended up with so many um, extra removal cards that were good that I ended up pulling out the Repel the Vile and the Vol Voltage Surge. <laughs> the uh, Lizard Blades, such a great card, was awesome. We have the Explosive Entry, which actually did come in handy a number of times. Uh, Banishing Slash was a powerhouse because we had so many artifacts and enchantments in the deck. Uh, we had four copies of Air of Enlightenment. So we were generally always getting this in our opening hand. We were always getting that scry to help make sure we hit the lands that we needed, which was actually surprisingly more difficult in this than usual. I did go with only 16 lands instead of the usual like 17 they um, suggest to, but that's because we are typically a relatively low cost deck and we did have a lot of scrying power with these. So I did, didn't think it was gonna be that unbearable, but <laughs> just the number of times it didn't want to give us lands. Uh, we got the Iganjo and Exemplar. We got the Ancestral uh, Katana. Two of the Hotshot Mechanics. One Regent's Authority, which don't sleep on this card. If you have a lot of the enchantment cards or any of the legendary cards, the plus one, plus one counter bonus, in instead of it just being a plus two, plus two, and going to a plus one, plus one counter, plus one, plus one until the turn, was really um, useful. Very helpful in the games. Uh, Experimental Synthesizer and a Kumamo. So there you go. You have the deck. This worked out really well. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to join me while I stream, you can find me on Twitch in the link below. I hope to see you again in the next video and have a nice one.